Yeah, in this uh, lecture, we discuss nonlinear convection diffusion models and uh, numerical scheme. I am Navneet Jha from South Asian University. <clears throat> so the there are application of parabolic partial differential equations, and these includes convection effect, diffusion transport, option pricing, fluid flow, image processing, and information processing. So uh, before uh, starting, I would like to say uh, this parabolic partial differential equation has numerous application and especially the non-linear PDs uh, in most of the cases do not have solutions. So uh, in the subsequent uh, slides, we will observe that we will develop techniques for uh, solving non-linear problems whose analytic solutions are not known. But before proceeding to numerical observations, I would like to explain some uh, physical parts associated with convection diffusion phenomena. So uh, to, 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 to begin with, it is a mass transfer. What does it stand for? Simply transport of mass from one point to another point is called mass transfer. Convection is mass transfer due to bulk motion of a fluid. For example, the flow of water transports molecules that are dissolved in a water. The flow of air transports molecule, for example, oxygen and nitrogen that is present in the air and it dilute carbon dioxide. Diffusion is a mass transfer phenomena that causes the distribution of a chemical species to become more uniform in space as time passes. So when molecules are moving, but also constantly changing direction, diffusion occurs because of the statistics of this movement. So these are the terminology frequently used. Uh, before proceeding further, I would like to show you what is the, uh, how does it, this convection in a closed box look like? So uh, just observe, there is a closed box. This is how convection moves. It goes up and it is coming down. As the time passes, there is a sharp change in graphics, visualization. This is what, this is convection in a closed box. Next, diffusion. So at time t equal to zero, uh, we have surface and concentration. So <clears throat> these are the, this is the graphical representation of diffusion. Next, just take an example. We have a three glass of water, one with ice water and another is tepid tap water and the third one is boiling water. Now, just look at this. I'm going to drop a color in it. This is ice water. The same quantity color is kept in tepid water and the same quantity color is kept in boiling water. Oh, 
just see the rate of diffusion in each three category. The rate of diffusion in boiling water is much, much more as compared to ice water. So, uh, now I am uh, coming back. So, all these phenomena are basically governed by the help of a mathematical model that is diffusion equation. And we are all familiar with this diffusion equation, also known as heat equation. Uh, uh, by the help of differential equation, this is du, del u by del t equal to gamma del 2u by del x square. I am not concerned here how to solve this mathematical equation. I am only concerned what does this mathematical equation says and how does it is related with in our context of dealing non-linear convection diffusion model. Here, gamma is thermal diffusivity. This is a material property and control the rat rate at which heat diffuses. And UXT is denoting temperature at a position X and at time T. Now, consider uh, a heating rod. So, this is a rod and uh, we have two candles kept one at left side and another at right side. Just I have started heating. You see the, the, the heat at this location and heat at the right location are compared to more. It is more as compared to the heat towards the left end and towards the right end and in the center. In this uh, uh, Phenomena I have assumed temperature is constant on cross section and this bar is insulated so that heat moves left and right only. So heat backs and forth. So, so a, a, a typical cross section of this bar is, is denoted by uh, denoted like this moving further. I'm going to plot the temperature profile of this rod on this x-axis and u-axis. So we can well, well imagine that if we plot the graph of temperature, then to at the location of red position, the curve goes up. It is again going down. This the down downwards curve is basically it is in the range of center of this rod. It is again moving up and it is going down, down like this. So this is basically a temperature profile. Now, what happens to temperature as time passes? You see, here in this graph, I have denoted the upper arrow and downwards arrow. So as, as the temperature moves uh, from left to right at this location, it is increasing, U is increasing. And at this circle position, it starts going down. Again, at this position, it is going up and so on. So concavity or convexity is appearing here. Uh, so there is, uh, we can easily interpret that change in temperature is directly proportional to concavity of temperature. So, directly proportional, this proportionality constant is basically gamma. So, this is what written change in temperature is basically, it is del U by del T. This is change in temperature. And concavity is basically del 2 U by del X square. So, this is how we have formulated heat equation from this uh, simple physics. Now, the question is sign of this gamma. So gamma is positive. This is because del u by del t is positive when del 2 u by del x square is positive. This is what concave up, upward. Now, again, see the typical element of this rod and there is a position x left 
side is denoted by x minus h and right of x i am going to denote it by x plus h so the average temperature near x near the location x is basically u at the point x plus h plus u at the point x minus h divided by 2 this is the average temperature so if average temperature at the location x is larger what will happen this average value minus u is greater than 0 or you can say this average value is greater than u similarly if average temperature near x is smaller then what will happen this average value is less than u that is average value minus u is less than 0 so temperature goes up or down it depends on the sign of this quantity average temperature minus u now we know the second derivative partial derivative del 2u by del x square is basically is basically 2 by h square can be written as 2 by h square u of x plus h comma t plus u of x minus h comma t divided by 2 minus u of x comma t now this is basically a second central difference now incorporating it we have the interpretation of this heat equation now before proceeding further i have a model which is del u by del t equal to gamma del 2u by del x square it involves first order derivative in time direction and second order partial derivative in x direction when we extend this model to the most general case the equation involves second order partial derivative with respect to x first order partial derivative with respect to x u itself and first order partial derivative with respect to t as well so our concern is how to treat this first order derivative second order derivative in case of non-linear equation to begin with i'm just going to rewrite the forward difference operator which we are all familiar with it is simply u of x plus h minus u of x and backward difference is tell you is equal to u x minus u of x minus h so this forward difference if we expand it with the help of taylor series we can get it is h du by dx plus order h square or you can write du by dx equal to 1 by h forward difference operator u plus order h so this forward difference operator will help us to determine the approximate value of du by dx classically if i take limit as h goes to zero both the side we will have classical definition of derivative but because practically numerically we are we we cannot put h is equal to zero directly so this uh, this limit is basically handled with the help of iterative loop and we write du by dx equal to one by h forward difference operator dx and then we put it in a loop for uh, we go on the a small and a smaller value of h and then see the value of derivative so this way is the first derivative now this is a, a maple derivation of first derivative so i am just going to denote u0 equal to u at x and u1 at u of x plus h i have taken solution basis as a polynomial basis one comma x dimension is two this is the simplest form of 
basis and let us see a formulate a linear combination a into u1 plus b into u0 minus first derivative of u with respect to x. I am going to keep this in a variable named t. Evaluate this t on each basis element that is 1 and x. So when we take ux equal to 1, the t comes out to be a plus b. I have stored this a plus b in b naught. Similarly, when we take ux is equal to x, b1, which stores value of t, comes out to be a into x plus h plus bx minus 1. Now we are having two equations, b0 and b1, two unknowns, lowercase a and lowercase b. We can solve these two equations for two variables to get the value of a and b at 1 by h and another of them is minus 1 by h. So what we have got here, I have rewritten t as a into u1 plus b into u0, a is 1 by h, b is minus 1 by h, it is coming out to be u of x plus h by h minus ux by h. This is exactly same thing, forward difference operator divided by h. This is what we have derived in the previous slide. Now the question is, why I have chosen solution basis as 1 comma x? There can be other basis also. And is it possible to derive the formula of derivative like this forward difference operator, which approximate first derivative? Yes. Very simple. Very simple. I am going to take a solution basis as 1 comma e raised to the power x. And doing same calculation in t which is a into u1 plus b into u0 minus first derivative of u. And we'll evaluate this expression on each basis element that is 1 and e raised to the power x. Assign it in b0 and b1. b0 is coming out to be a plus b and b1 is coming out to be a into e raised to the power x plus h plus b into e raised to the power x minus e raised to the power x. Again, we have two equations, two variables easily solved to get the value of a and b as this. Put this value of a and b in this expression a into u1 plus b into u0. We get, this is not the exact forward difference operator like, but this is also, this also gives us an approximation of first order derivative, but this is called non-standard discretization. The previous one, the, the discretization, the forward difference exactly we have got on the polynomial basis that is called a standard discretization because I have used a standard basis. Here I have used another basis, so it is non-standard discretization. In fact, don't just look at this. Take the limit h goes to 0 in this expression. It is giving you exactly same thing what we have used earlier. Earlier we have used u of x plus h by h minus u of x by h. That limit as h, h goes to 0 also given us uh, first derivative. Du of uh, du of x. Here also we are giving, we are getting first derivative of x. So we have got another formula for derivative, first order derivative. Now, why not we consider the basis one comma sine x? Just see, same thing. 
equal to a into u1 plus b into u0 minus first derivative. Evaluate this expression on each basis element 1 comma sin x. You will get value of a and b as this. And when you put this value, you will get this kind of expression. Just come out to the uh, last, last line. Take the limit as s goes to 0. This is also giving us first derivative. I mean to say, because you are having so many bases of dimension 2, same way I can have another basis 1 comma cos x, sin x comma cos x, e raised to the power x comma e raised to the power minus x, e raised to the power x comma sin x. There are several possible combination of basis you can make and you can make corresponding first formula for the first order derivative. So why, why, we, why we concentrate on only one particular type of definition of derivative which is by Newton that is limit h goes to 0 u of x plus h minus u x by h. No, there are other definitions also. Now, uh, before, before proceeding further, there is a simple question, why I am using, why we will use basis other than 1 comma x? This is a very, there is an interesting fact behind it. Basically, this no, these are basically called non-polynomial basis. For example, 1 comma sin x. For the practical application, uh, we are not simply going to use take basis as 1 comma sin x. We are basically, we will use it like this 1 comma sin alpha x where alpha will be uh, called frequency parameter. So in for the practical application, uh, that types of basis can be used. And by taking this non-polynomial basis, it capture the oscillation in the solution. So what happens? The value of frequency parameter alpha will tune the oscillation of the solution. So in a, if, if in a some uh, particular subdomain solution oscillates high, high, there is high oscillation of solution, we can change the value of frequency parameter in order to stabilize, stabilize the solution. So that way, this non-polynomial basis is advantageous compared with polynomial basis, but at the same time, as far as solution is concerned, solutions remains same in each of the cases. The only difference is it affect the computing time, evaluation time, number of arithmetics. So these things are affected. Solutions remain same, but at the same time, it is advantageous because it capture the highly oscillatory solution with a that smooth the solution up to the extent right now now i am going to show you the uh, practical numerical simulation of this first derivative and second derivative this is what i have uh, written the formula first order it is u of x plus h minus u x by h which i will denote by u uppercase x that is first derivative plus h this is basically uh, uh, the next term of the taylor series expansion and there is a, a second order approximation of first order derivative it is u of x plus h minus u of x minus h by 2h and uh, this is uh, uh, this is what I have kept it in red color. It is h square. So basically, this h square term says that it is second order approximation. The previous one is first order approximation. I'm just going to write the computer program and evaluate this first 
order and second order approximation for typically ux is equal to sin x and evaluate it at x equal to 1. So when I am taking the value of h, take value of h equal to 1 and calculate u of x plus h and u of x, the derivative is coming out to be this because the exact derivative of sin x is known to us. So we can find the difference of this and exact value. It is coming out to be 4.7 into 10 raised to the power minus 1. Just reducing the value of h, 0 0.1, it is coming out to be 4.2 e minus 0 0.2. Like this, I am just going to reduce each time h equal to h by 10, it, the error is going to be reduced minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. So, when h is equal to 0 0.0001, error is coming out to be 4.21 into 10 raised to the power minus 5. This is obtained with the help of first order method. Now, same calculation I am going to apply it for the second order formula that is u of x plus h minus u of x minus h by 2h. Let us see what will happen. Same type of h, same value of h is going to be considered here. We will get error like 8.7 into 10 raised to the power minus 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Now compare compare h equal to in the first order method here h equal to 10 raised to the power minus 4. Here also h equal to 10 raised to the power minus 4. In both the cases here I have got error as 4.2 into 10 raised to the power minus 5 and here I am getting red color 9 into 10 raised to the power minus 10. So second order method is giving us more accurate derivative values compared to the first order method. You see that there is a vast difference that is 10 raised to the power minus 5 here 10 raised to the power minus 10 in second order method. So second order method is the difference is very very small as compared to 4 into 2. 10 raised to the power minus 5. So, second order method is giving us almost accurate solution compared to the first order method. Can you imagine if we apply third order method, what will happen? Can you imagine if we apply fourth order method, what will happen? So, in this case, here, here, I have here in this first order method, in the last error is 4.2 into 10 raised to the power minus 5. This is approximately equal to this 9 minus uh, 0 0.6. So compared to h equal to 0 0.01. So 10 raised to the power minus 2. In the second order method, h is 10 raised to the power minus 2. But in first order method, it is 10 raised to the power minus 4. In first order method, you have taken h to be very small. In second order method, it is not that much small. If you are going to take very small value of h, computing time is going to be very high. So, as a conclusion, it is always advantageous to make a higher order method for solving differential equation. In this example, I have just explained how to find a derivative. From this derivative, we will move to the differential equation. In the next uh, slide, I have just written just uh, three, four lines of code in C++. Uh, you can uh, very easily understand the same code can be written in Maple, Mathematica, Python or any of the language. I have included this math module and I have defined the function u which is sin x and x is taken as 1.0 and I have defined a loop 
h is going from 1 till h is greater than 0 0.00001 each time h equal to h by 10 means each time h will be reduced by h by 10 and we'll calculate and we'll calculate uh, this uh, derivative and the absolute difference FABS functional absolute of this derivative minus cos x. Cos x is the exact derivative. This is for the first order method. In the next printf statement, I have used second order method. Just run it. You can observe the error. At the same time, you can also include the CPU time, calculate the CPU time in each case. You can realize the difference of CPU time in first order method and second order method. Quite easy. Now, again coming back, du by dx, what we know is limit h goes to 0, u of x plus h minus ux by h. This h is actually x plus h, left point minus x right point or this is x is if there is a line and we denote we denote a point by x then x plus h is the next to x same way there is a concept of q derivative quantum derivative that is this is defined as instead of there taking limit h goes to zero here we take limit q goes to one u of qx minus ux by qx minus x. This derivative is defined for x not equal to 0. Right? So, du by dx, this q derivative is for x not equal to 0. We can define derivative at 0 using this previous definition. All right? Now, just calculate limit of q derivative u of q dot x minus ux by qx minus x when ux is equal to sine x limit as q goes to 1 coming out to be cos x this is exactly same as obtained same as using the definition limit h goes to 0 Similarly, for cos x, the q derivative is again coming out to be minus sin x, exactly same as what we used earlier as h goes to 0. This is just an experiment for ux is equal to x raised to the power 4. What is the derivative? It is 4x q, but by using the other way, by using the q derivative, Similarly, ux equal to 1 plus e raised to the power x. It is coming out to be e raised to the power x. I mean to say, there are several approaches to define rate of change. Derivative is a rate of change can be defined in a numerous fashion. Nowadays, there is an increasing result on fractional derivative so we can we can discuss about it sometimes later now convection diffusion model imagine a river flowing strongly and smoothly liquid pollution pours into the water at a certain point. What shape does the pollution stain from? What shape does the pollution stain form on the surface of river? Pollution diffuses slowly through the water, but dominant is movement of river. This movement of river convex the pollution downstream. Convection carry the pollution along a one dimensional curve and diffuse and spread that curve. If you, if you see graphically. Now, 
time independent convection diffusion model is in the general case is written as epsilon u double prime equal to a function of x u single prime single prime means first derivative with respect to x plus bx ux plus zx and suppose the value of u is given at one end and at another end here ux is pollution concentration at a distance x first derivative is convection term second derivative is diffusion term epsilon is defined as diffusivity ax is velocity of pollution bx is convection coefficient and gx is source sink term that describe creation or destru destruction of pollution for example burning methane will destruct methane and oxygen that is comes in the category of sinking and that will also create carbon dioxide and water vapor that is called classified in a source term so uh, with this uh, i am stopping here and will continue in the next uh, part 2 of this uh, uh, course content with this thank you very much